Alright everybody, welcome back. It's Caitlin here, and today I'm super excited to be hanging with you guys, and I'm going to be sharing some stationery that I picked up over the last couple months. Before I get into the haul, make sure to get cozy, grab some slippers, a blanket, ooh, a couch, yes, <laughs> and let's just chill and talk stationery together. percent of the time when I'm using scrapbook paper in my journal, it's usually recycled from packaging that I've received items in and usually that packaging is craft paper. But when I saw this collage memo paper bundle by Yohaku, which is the same brand that I get my washi tape from, I couldn't resist getting a pack. This set I was able to pick up from my local stationery store Paper Plus Cloth and in it, it comes with four different paper designs, all of which kind of range from neutral blues to grays, and then there's this one paper with a pop of yellow, which I think is really cool. I also think that these papers will pair really well with the stationery I already own, especially my craft paper, which I like to use in almost every spread I make in my bullet journal. Now that the fall has arrived, I have kind of reached the time where I'm on the hunt for my next bullet journal. And one of the options that I picked up for myself is this A5 dot grid notebook from the brand Tittle and Jot. This notebook comes with a really beautiful linen hardcover and it has 192 unbleached cotton dot grid pages. The notebook has a really minimal design just a nameplate and a bookmark, and the pages are unnumbered and they're this kind of off-white color with very small, medium to dark dots. Here's a quick comparison to my Leuchtturm and my Archer and Olive notebook so you can kind of see where the paper lies. And I also took the liberty of doing a pen test in case anyone's curious how fountain pens and gel pens performed on this paper. Because the paper is uncoated, I found that when I used my fountain pen in a really heavy swatch, it did bleed through the paper a little bit, but this paper is also 120 GSM, so it's not going to be super, super thick and super, super opaque. Another nice thing about this package was it came with some stickers and journaling cards as freebies, which I just thought was really nice. And yeah, that's an overview of the notebook. We will see if I end up using it in 2022. The next item is kind of tech related, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I still intend to use it in my journal, but this is the Instax Mini Link printer, and this is a really cool printer because it prints the traditional 2x3 Instax photos with photos on your smartphone. Traditionally, I've used a camera for Instax photos, and this is definitely way more convenient. And I thought we would do a test print together. So here we go on that. Just like the camera, the print starts out white and then develops into the final colored version. And something I was really pleasantly surprised by was that the quality of the print was the same as if I had taken the photo on my Instax camera, which is exactly what I was looking for. Of course, the quality isn't going to be like photo printer level, and this example beside a photo that I printed with my HP Tango I think exemplifies that. But I love the kind of grainy quality of these photos because it makes the photo kind of look like a memory to me. And I can't wait to use these photos in all my memory keeping and travel journaling and even maybe photo journaling. 
the next package that I picked up is from a new to me shop called the Washi Tape Shop. The Washi Tape Shop is definitely not a unknown brand. I think in terms of Washi Tape, it's often the place to go for such things, but I'd never personally shop there because I mostly buy my washi tapes locally, but I did decide to pick up three washi tape sets along with two singles. first set I picked up is this happy journaling set, which has artwork designed by Serica or Serica Studio on Instagram. I don't have enough good things to say about this washi tape. All of the designs are so thoughtful and beautiful and neutral, which I really love. And the tape is kind of cool because it has a peel backing, which makes it really easy to kind of cut and position before you apply it on the page. I've already started using these tapes in my September bullet journal setups, and so far they've been awesome, and I can't wait to use them the rest of the month, and definitely in the future as well. The next two sets I picked up are more solid color washi tapes, which is something that's definitely lacking in my own personal collection. I tend to kind of gravitate towards neutrals, although you might be able to argue that these are also neutrals. But I picked up these vintage color sets, which have kind of nice muted blues, greens, and browns. And then I also picked up a other set, which is very similar, but it is called the Retro Rainbow set. This set is very similar to the vintage color one, but it's a little thinner, and the colors are a little bit more pastel. It comes with a purple, which wasn't in the vintage color set, as well as a pink, so I think between the two sets it provides a lot of variety, which I really like. So yeah, we'll see now that I have these colored washies how I incorporate color into my journal in a way that's still very muted and calming, but the colors are pretty muted already, so I don't think it'll be too hard. The two single tapes I picked up is this one script tape, which I just thought would look really cool layered over some scrap paper. And I also picked up this vintage stamp tape, which I think will be really cool if you kind of unroll it and then cut out each stamp individually. And I really like the variety of the different stamp designs on this washi tape, and I think it's a nice kind of alternative to buying a bunch of vintage stamp scrapbook paper. picked up were some stickers from an Etsy shop called Opal and Fern. The package came with a bunch of really cute freebies, which is always a nice surprise, and I picked up two sticker sheets from the seller, one being the teacup sticker set, and the other one being the coffee cup sticker set. 
Not only is it super fun to find stickers from a local seller, but I also really love the designs of each of these cups. I think it's really cool how the artist made each cup design different, while still kind of adhering to a color scheme that makes them all look really nice together. I think these will be really cool kind of in a journal theme, and I can't wait to use them in my bullet journal in the future. Last thing I picked up are a bunch of stamps from the shop Gion Charm. You can buy these stamps from different places, but I decided to buy directly from the artist themselves on their own website because I found that they provided a lot more variety of stamps, which does make sense, of course, and I just thought it would be a better bang for my buck and for shipping costs if I just bought a bunch of ones I liked, and then it made the shipping per stamp a little less. These are wood-mounted stamps, so on the bottom you have the rubber part, which is where the actual stamping occurs, and the wood on top shows you the design itself. I purchased a combination of her stamps that are illustrations, as well as a couple stamps that have text on them, so I really love the variety of the different stamps, and I just really like stamps because you can constantly reuse them. You just have to replace the ink pad, and you can also use any color of ink on the stamp, which makes it a lot more versatile. So that was a giant run through of all the stationery that I bought in the last couple months for my journal. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all the stationery. I love watching stationery hauls, so I found it very enjoyable and I hope it was the same for you. And besides that, that's kind of the video coming to a close. Until the next one, I hope you all are safe and doing well and I can't wait to chat with you next week in another video. Bye everybody. Hello Ramona I can't shake the simplest feeling Beyond the ghost We stand on the opposite shore